Hello everyone. Today is um, Friday, April 22nd, 2022. Excuse me. At 7.28 a.m. <clears throat> and I'll say this. Ain't that about a bitch that I still didn't get to get to sleep that great last night. But the sleep that I did get was, um, I believe it had, I don't remember exactly what the dream was, but it was dream manipulation and something that caused me fear and Star Bricker was in the doggone dream. So that's how I know it was dream manipulation. So... I thought that as much heavy pressure on my heart last night, I almost thought that, um, I almost thought that with the heavy pressure on my heart, <clears throat> that I, I thought I was going to get to sleep well. And I went to try to go to bed and I went to sleep at, um, about two o'clock in the morning and t did a lot of twisting and turning and just laying there and couldn't sleep. And I think that I probably didn't get to fall asleep until after 4.30 or 5 o'clock. And again, hearing him, the midget next door, slamming doors and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> but, um, and last night, I don't know if that was the midget's vehicle or who else's vehicle that somebody kept repeatedly off and on. Excuse me, within a few seconds of increments, kept on, you know, brightening their lights into my window off and on, like brightening their vehicle lights into my window. So. I wake up with unwanted intrusive thoughts and um <clears throat> so one thing I forgot to say oh oh yeah but before I go I want to say that um last night I started to doze off and go to sleep and I was breathing hard and you know felt, I mean, it felt like as if my heart was lacking oxygen and trying to get some oxygen. And I, I felt scared and traumatized for a bit because I started to feel such strong pressure in my heart that it became painful for a couple of seconds. And I started to feel like scared to go to sleep because I was afraid that I was going to die in my sleep or something. And I woke up this morning and felt like, well, it's a miracle that I'm still alive and woke up. And so one thing, um, Kimberly Harper, another thing I forgot that she said was, yeah, Candy doesn't have really have anybody to follow her anyway. The only way people know about her is um her being on their recommended feed or some or something like that you know on on their recommendations or you know on youtube and stuff like that but i remember one time when that kimberly harper perp when she claimed that she was older than me and she even said something like that kids are that she has children that are older than me or something like that well um, well, well, I didn't realize the name Kimberly was that old. You know, I thought the name Kimberly was like maybe a decade older than my generation. I, I mean, not, I'm sorry, not my generation, but my age. But, um, she, well, if you're older, if you have kids older than me and you know, it's just like, 
it's like, well, really, shame on you for meddling in somebody's business and bullying somebody because you're angry that they blocked you, you know. I had a, me being targeted, um, too many people blocked me left and right. And, you know, I feel bad about it, and I may talk about it and stuff like that, you know. But I don't do months on end of harassing somebody because they blocked me, you know. But, I mean, it's, um, and, and then I realized, well, that's, I guess, targeted, part of the targeted life is, you know, if you're a targeted individual, then, you know, everybody has you blocked. And due to the harassment, you have to have everybody blocked. Or you just block them back because they blocked you first. You know, and then, you know, me having like OCD and stuff, it's like I, I, I may end up having like unwanted intrusive thoughts about that person um, and wondering, freaking out and wondering what I did or said wrong. And especially if they're supposed to be targeted. But yesterday they had somebody that's supposed to be Christian and unfollowed me. Yes, I mean, she just recently started to follow me. And then unfollowed me yesterday. And then a couple of other people unfollowed me. And I was like, what did I say wrong? And so, on Twitter. And so they had this person named Kixotic Kane or something on Twitter that would be, like, very annoying with, um, take your tweet and then quote tweet it with the hashtag of, you know, check my pin post. And so, you know, doing that to a whole lot of my tweets. And so, because of that, I, I feel like, well, are you a real T.I. Or are you, or, you, or are you just like a fake spammer, you know? And so then I had to block that because I was sick and tired of seeing, you, you know. I mean, I never had a conversation with this person or anything like that. So, yesterday... I, last night, I was doing some research about, you know, I just Google searched the phrase love, meddling, and, and drama. And the responses I got was a lot of Christian, um, even though they weren't King James Version. So, you know, but it was a lot of professed Christian um, websites and Bible scriptures. Excuse me. You know, I've talked about this before about the narcissistic gang stalkers being a busybody in other men's matters and stuff like that. But you know what? To be honest, in my situation, I probably wouldn't be discussing or talking about family issues online. But the reason why is, you know, Family or not, you know, I, I talk about, you know, whatever is part of the gang stalking and narcissistic abuse. And then, you know, everything is twisted and perverted. And, um, and the thing is, I'm one of those, I'll say, you know, I'll sin and do wrong and make mistakes. But... I'm one of those targeted individuals that I have not made any deals or bribe. I have not taken any bribes. And I cut off the person trying to offer me something last night, and that person's associated with Janet. I already told y'all about that. And um, so I just, I, I just, um, you know, cut off that person. Because it's like, I mean, I even said on Twitter that these, you know, perp bastards want to wait until I'm at my lowest. So want to try to come at me and try to offer me deals and stuff. I reject them. And so, like, Alex, the ex-boyfriend Alex Mendez, I think he also 
you know, seem like as if it was a covert way of him trying to offer me a deal or a bribe by trying to, you know, act like he wanted to slither like a snake back into my life. And, you know, I didn't want to end up committing suicide behind him. And it, and it would have very, very much messed up my head to end up being pregnant by a worthless loser like him. Yes, I said it. So I guess I'm going to have to be single and childless because I don't trust getting pregnant by any man, you know, especially these days right now. For new, some reasons I can't even say on here, but for many reasons, excuse me, I, for many reasons I, I cannot um, say, I can't say why. So, but I wouldn't be, you know, discussing family business, <clears throat> you know, if it weren't pertaining to, you know, the gang stalking aspect of narcissistic abuse. So, so I mean, I'm just, you know, I, like I said, you know, I, I'm glad to stay up in here and I felt like I just didn't want, I mean, didn't want to, um, I didn't want to be, you know, stressed out or, um, you know, feeling mentally uncomfortable or stressed out or, um, you know, having an emotional or mental crisis while up in here, you know, I just wanted to, you know, be off the streets and mentally relax away from whatever harassment and gang stalking or stressing about an argument, fuss or fight or anything like that, you know, excuse me. And so I'm just, I mean, I don't perp anybody, and I have not been initiated or anything like that, you know. I'm actually targeted, and then, you know, I'm being falsely accused of being a gang stalker by people who don't have a clear knowledge of what gang stalking really is. You're just throwing around, throwing around, uh, throwing around words to pretend the fake sounds smart or pretend to sound like you think you're intelligent. But I know what's happening to me in my targeted life just about every day. You, you know, so, so then, well, right now it's amazing that, um, after I brushed all the crud all my, off of my teeth yesterday, I don't mean to sound graphic, but I'll say that maybe I feel like about 25 or 30% of the pressure on this on my tooth and the abscess on the side is shrunk o on the side it, I think I can the reason why I feel the pressure it might be some abscess under the tooth like some pus or whatever and I can't go to the dog on doctor, but it's like I even like I did a first round of brushing my teeth or whatever I think, and then I flossed. Like, but even before I flossed, I know it was a lot of blood that came up. But I mean, it's, I mean, even when when I'm on the streets, I don't even have to be down in the dumps and depressed and stuff, but. You know, it's hard to get to brush your teeth. And you don't really get to eat the healthiest. Um, feeling depressed and stuff like that, you know. But I really do think that at that Asian restaurant, that, that, um, th that it was a piece of the chicken wings that I ate that cracked my tooth. And I was wondering, well, wow, this is so crispy and crunchy and hard that it's senseless. It doesn't make sense that it's so crispy and crunchy and hard. And I think that 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 hard 
the way they make the chicken so hard and crispy, I think well that combined with you know my depression and stuff, and I was depressed, you know, as a result of the online cyberbullying and gang stalking and abuse and stuff like that. <clears throat> so all that contributed to you know why my why my tooth initially started causing me problems but the i guess the original reason is it had the biggest and most of the silver filling in my mouth so um but it, it, it took a few hours but the bentonite clay it I mean, me brushing my teeth with it and taking it internally. I mean, I I noticed a big, huge improvement, though. A big improvement. <clears throat> and the tooth is still cracked. But then, you know, when I brush my teeth with the bentonite clay, it helps the tooth kind of fall back in line. And sometimes it'll temporary, temporarily act like as if, as if the tooth is um, like as if, it, as if it's not broken at all, <clears throat> until or unless I end up eating like some something junk food related or processed because not having an, enough money to get to eat healthy. But you know. I was asking to myself last night, you know, people spread the word when other people need help and they're suffering and stuff like that. <clears throat> they have compassion and want to help. But when it comes to me, they make people make like as if they're sick and tired of me, like as if I'm such a burden and need to just stop asking. But people who have a place and, and they're at risk for becoming homeless, Y'all do anything to battle and help protect that person. But if somebody's homeless and, you know, trying to get stabilized, then y'all y'all um, look at them differently. So, <clears throat> I mean, I've been feeling de depression about that, too, about feeling like a burden, a financial burden. And... The smear campaigns is the reason why people don't want to help me and stuff. And I'm like, well, they, but I heard that they do that to us targeted individuals, that they bully and mob you out of the neighborhood or mob you out of your own home, <clears throat> whether it be a rented apartment or a house you've been paying mortgage on for over 30 years. And once they get you, to where they got you on the streets, homeless and starving and suffering, and then people. Uh, the, I think you gotta be a fake target to um look down on a homeless ti. You know, and then being days of sleep deprived, so they wanna try to say, oh well, I mean these protected fake ti perps who have a vehicle, a decent job and a place to live, they wanna say that we legit targets who are suffering on the streets. They lie and say that we have an underhanded agenda to, you know, make the TI community look crazy. And which is not the case. I mean, well, if you're a real targeted individual and you got to suffer sleep deprivation, you know, you're extra snappy and extra sensitive. If you're deprived of sleep, food, water, or whatever, that you that's you know food water and sleep if you're deprived of any of those things you end up you know not being able to function properly if you do i mean if you drive a car you won't be able to function properly if you're sleep deprived food deprived or or water deprived or you I mean, you couldn't even concentrate or focus on cooking. Um, if you had a job, you know, if you had like a janitorial job, you may be very forgetful or clumsy. <clears throat> and, 
and because people see you acting odd by no fault of your own, especially if you're days of sleep deprived, you end up, you know, being a little more irritable and ill-tempered. It's not your fault. But they want to falsely say that you're, um, that you're pretending, you know, just to make the TI community look bad. No, how about you come out and admit that, that you, you, you took those bribes and now you're protected and safe and you don't have to worry about struggling and suffering and being homeless no more. But, you know, these narcissistic perps, they hate you by choice. I don't want to hear a doggone thing about people wanting to say, you know, <clears throat> well, that they're forced to look at us a certain way or that they gang stalk, I mean, that they're gang stalking you because they're forced to do it or they can't get out. And then they want to make like they feel compassion on a perp. But they, but they feel have a cutthroat opinion about their fellow TIs. That's why I'm saying, you know, your words might be like, oh, I don't feel any sympathy for these perps. But then your actions show that, you know, that you're more loyal to the perps than other targets, fellow targets, you know. <clears throat> and so professed targets like to say, well, you know, and I hate when the fake T.I. perps want to say that, oh, I don't trust anyone right about now, and then they turn around and, and, and just like what narcs do, you know, if they try to say, oh, I don't trust anybody right now, and then they catch you unawares, and then swindle and swoop in and swindle, swindle you out of something, and then you end up left confused, hurt, and devastated. But they don't, they're the ones who don't trust anyone, but then they're the ones who exploit, scam, and take advantage and perk, you know. And, and see, you know, so now I officially am sleep deprived and barely have any food and I'm still at risk for being back on the streets today. It's now at the moment 7.50 in the morning. I'm going to try to see if I can get me some more sleep. <clears throat> but, um, <clears throat> it, so, I mean, I still have just $320. And so I need help with, um, an extra 100, you know, in order to get to stay here for an, an, I mean, I'm almost there, you know. Well, actually, I, I mean, it's like, I would hate to have to go all the way downtown and go on the streets and panhandle for food and stuff. And if I can just ask maybe just for $50 more in order for it to be the right amount for me to get to stay here for one more week. And then I just hop on the doggone bus and, you know, panhandle downtown. But I'm like, I'm mentally and emotionally fragile right now and not strong, not mentally strong enough to handle being, you know, for people to be rude to me. If I feel like I'm this week, I feel like I had another emotional mental health crisis you know <clears throat> and, and and you know I'm tr tr trying to stay off the streets I mean I, I mean I'm trying to I really would like to try to see about you know if I can get something help with something permanent again but because you're targeted you know most people don't want to help and and then the um you know, the narcissistic perps want to have all their ducks in a row with smear campaigning and lying on purpose to make sure nobody helps you. And then they brag and laugh when you're back to suffering on the streets and starving and stuff. 
because even skinny targeted individuals, I, I mean, don't y'all understand that being a targeted individual, all of your God-given rights are stripped from you? <clears throat> yeah, so anyway, you really don't have any rights, which includes you don't even have a, they make it like as where you don't have, especially if you're labeled as crazy and a mental patient, they make it like you're not allowed to or you can't think for yourself or you're incapable. And so they feel like they have a license and a right to meddle in your personal business and stuff. And, you know, and it's like, well, wow, the Bible is saying that these are like very, very, you know, and I felt bad and had to pray about, you know, altercations and arguing with people, even with the perps and um, argu arguing and fighting with people. And um, it's like, you know, to, and, and, but I mean, it's like you really do have to fight for your life. It's not you no know, just petty drama dealing with the gang stalkers it's like war. war battling against them trying to control my mind so before I go I need help like with at least 50 or more dollars before um before 2 o'clock p.m. thanks <laughs>